One of the most pervasive audio myths is that XLR microphones sound superior to USB microphones. This leads to a lot of newcomers shelling out hundreds of dollars on an XLR mic, an audio interface, and often an inline amplifier like a cloud lifter, when a much less expensive USB option would be enough. So here are the facts. Fact number one, in both XLR and USB microphones, the physical components used to actually capture sound waves is identical. This applies to condenser and dynamic mics. Case in point, this microphone, the Samson Q2U, and even this mic, the Shure MV7, they can be connected via XLR or USB. They have ports for both at the bottom and the Samson Q2U, I've actually been recording it both USB and XLR at the same time, and I've been switching between the XLR and USB audio this whole time. Now, if you have a sharp ear or you really know what to listen for, then you will notice a little bit of a difference between the XLR and USB audio of the Samsung QTU. So keep watching as I'll explain exactly why that is. So fact number one was about the similarities, but there are two key differences to note when it comes to XLR versus USB mics in terms of the final audio that you get. Fact number two, USB microphones have a built-in ADC or analog to digital converter. XLR microphones don't. Well, of course, if there's a mic like this, the Shure MV7 that can do both, then the ADC is gonna be active for the USB mode, just not the XLR mode. Anyway, what is an analog to digital converter? Well, first we have to understand what an analog signal and digital signal is. Sound waves in the real world, like human speech, acoustic instruments, or really anything that you can hear in nature, produce a sound that's an analog signal, or a sound wave that's a smooth, continuous set of points. But in order for a computer to process that analog sound wave, it has to be converted into a format that it can recognize, which is a series of zeros and ones, or a digital signal. And that's where an analog to digital converter comes in. It relays that original signal captured by the capsule of the microphone into an approximation of the original source and represented in zeros and ones. Now the details of this process and how high of a quality audio that you can get from it is based on sample rate and bit depth, but that's a bit outside of the scope of this video. And ultimately, if you want to record audio to any digital medium like a computer or a phone or even a sound recorder that's taking an XLR input, it's got to be converted into a digital format. Now, as I stated, USB microphones have their own ADC built into the device itself. It's doing that conversion before it sends the signal to your computer. XLR microphones do not have this analog to digital converter built inside, so they need to be plugged into an audio interface first. And that's what ends up doing the conversion. So I actually have this plugged into not just my computer, but the Elgato Wave XLR, and then that is plugged into my computer via USB. But at the end of the day, the conversion has to get done one way or the other. So the only real difference here is that with XLR mics, the conversion is being done with a separate piece of hardware, but it's being done inside the microphone circuitry itself with a USB mic, since it's designed specifically for computers in the first place. So can this affect sound quality? Potentially, yes. If the USB microphone's ADC or the audio interface used for an XLR microphone is capable of sending through a higher quality signal than the other, which is measured in sample rate and bit depth, then that digital signal will be a closer approximation to what the analog sound waves actually are. Now, in reality, anything over 16-bit or 44.1 kilohertz is generally imperceptible to the human ear. I've actually talked about this in one of my headset review videos, and even cheap $20 to $30 USB microphones can record at that bit depth and sample rate. Same thing goes for $20 audio interfaces as well. They can generally do 16-bit at the minimum. So from what I've explained so far, there is no perceptible difference in sound quality between XLR mics and USB mics in terms of either their ability to capture audio or due to the sample rate and bit depth of the USB mic or the audio interface that you're plugging the XLR mic into. However, this third fact can be a potential reason to consider an XLR microphone if sound is your number one priority. Fact number three, USB microphones have an amplifier built into them XLR dynamic microphones generally don't. One exception is the Blue Sona, but I'm not going to talk about that mic in this video right now. Paired with the analog to digital converter inside of a USB microphone or an audio interface is an amplifier. This is usually referred to as a preamp, and this is necessary to boost the signal volume to a usable level. And it's called pre just because this amplification is happening before the signal even gets to your computer or other device. Now, this is the Audio Technica AT2020. This is a condenser XLR microphone. Condenser XLR microphones are actually a bit different because they do have preamps inside and they're activated by phantom power. So this section doesn't really apply as much to these, but dynamic XLR microphones like this, the Elgato Wave DX, 
These generally do not have preamps inside. The analog sound waves get captured by the capsule and then that analog signal goes straight through the XLR port and right to the audio interface. And the mic is technically not even powered on at all. All the amplification is done using the audio interface. And in some cases with very low sensitivity mics like the Shure SM7B, it's very notorious for this. Most audio interfaces do not actually apply enough amplification to the signal, the analog signal from the SM7B to make it loud enough to really be usable. So you have a few options in that case. One, you can boost the sound in post using like Audacity or whatever program you have. Now the problem with that is that's going to increase the noise floor and that's the electronic feedback kind of TV static sound that you'll hear in microphones. Actually, that's really relevant to this microphone, the Razer Siren Elite. I'll talk about that shortly. But when you increase the gain in post like that, you're increasing not just the volume of the signal that you want, but also the noise floor as well. Now, alternatively, you can use an inline amplifier like a cloud lifter, and this will supply clean gain to the signal of the microphone with minimal noise added. Those things can be quite expensive. The cloud lifter, last time I saw it was like 150 bucks. And lastly, you can switch audio interfaces entirely to one that does supply more gain. So for example, a big selling point of the audio interface that I'm using right now, the Wave XLR, is that it supplies enough gain to the Shure SM7B to make it usable. And if it can power that, it can power pretty much any microphone that you can throw at it. Now, USB microphones are different. Whether they're dynamic or condenser, they have preamps built in. This is a dynamic microphone. This is the Razer Siren Elite. So what happens if the amplification done inside of the microphone itself is not very clean and it has a lot of that static sound, a lot of that feedback, and the result is the noise floor is very loud. Well, in that case, you have a problem. You can't just switch audio interfaces or use an inline preamp. Everything's done inside the microphone itself. Now, in my experience reviewing dozens of mics, this is almost never a problem, but it does come up sometimes. Now, if you've been listening to this with headphones, especially good quality headphones, then you'll hear some of that static in this microphone, the Razer Siren Elite. No matter what I change the gain under the microphone or the gain like in the window settings, you're always gonna hear that. You'll hear it in other people's reviews of this microphone. Anytime you're hearing this mic, you'll hear that unless they have a noise reduction filter, which can kind of bring it down, but it will also kind of warp the audio of everything else a little bit as well. That's really the reason that I stopped using this mic. Even though it sounds amazing in terms of the tone, that's really too much of a problem for me. And if you go back and listen to some of the samples of the Samson Q2U, used USB versus XLR, you actually hear a little bit more of that static. You have to boost the volume like really loud, a little bit more of that noise floor in the USB input versus the XLR, which is cleaner. And that's because it's using the preamp that's inside the Samsung Q2U for the USB input. It's not quite as clean of gain as you're gonna get with like an audio interface, like I'm using the Wave XLR. So if you have a USB microphone with a known noisy preamp, then that is the one instance where I can say, yeah, from a sound quality perspective, you're better off using a different mic, but not necessarily an XLR mic. It could just be a different USB microphone that doesn't have as noisy of a preamp inside. So TLDR XLR microphones do not inherently sound better than USB microphones, but since you can plug them into other audio interfaces or inline preamps, at least in the case of dynamic XLR microphones, you can avoid the potential for a noisy preamp inside your microphone and ultimately leave how clean the amplification is to your audio interface or inline preamp. So not better, just more versatile, more options.